Medieval India was a melting pot for different religions, trade, and culture. Buddhism, Hinduism, and Islam were the three main religions that were being spread throughout India at the time. Hinduism and Islam were the two main religions at the time with the most followers, while Buddhism wasn't as popular, but it was gaining popularity fast. Hinduism and Islam were the original religions, while Buddhism was kind of new to the people, so it took a little bit to gain traction. Once it gained followers, it became a snowball and kept gaining more followers. Many people were of Islamic descent in India, but also many people were converting from Islam to Hinduism in the area. People liked the beliefs that came along with Hin Hinduism, which caused for many to convert religions. The Bhakti movement arose in southern India and it basically attempted to blend Islam and his Hinduism. It was not very successful, but it did serve to connect the two communities. Another piece of the culture in India that was huge was the idea of asceticism. It was the idea to live as close to death as possible by starving yourself to open up your mind. Many people practice this in order to escape the physical body and reach a more true place. Many widely popular religions at the time practiced this like Hinduism. Along with religion, trade was booming in India at the time with the agricultural surplus and a huge population. The population was increasing in India at the time because there was excess food causing for more merchants and traders to allow trade to flourish. Specialized items such as salt, pepper, copper, and iron could only be attained in certain areas which caused supply and demand. Lots of trade developed around these hot commodities and also sugar and saffron were high in demand but low in supply. Many people were trading in and out of India at the time. Culture was also flowing into India. Many different travelers and merchants spread their beliefs and culture into India by talking to people along the way. This made India a huge melting pot for all sorts of culture, like clothing, food, beliefs, and ways of living. India was such a large place at the time that southern and northern India were very different in the way that the people lived. This was because different beliefs were spread north, like Hinduism, while Buddhism was mainly in the south. Overall, medieval India was a huge area of diversity, and all over there were people trading, practicing religions, spreading their diverse beliefs, causing India to be a huge melting pot of culture. The Silk Road was able to serve as a way of spreading culture, goods, and agriculture. India was a major source of the exchanges made along the Silk Road, whether it be religion or spice. There were many things contributed from India that weren't tangible items, like religion, lifestyle, and different ideas. Asceticism, Buddhism, and Hinduism were all religions that were taken from India and passed to other places. For example, asceticism was only passed to the Islamic Empire, while Hinduism and Buddhism reached out to China, Japan, Southeast Asia, Central Asia, and the Islamic Empire. There were also things like the monsoon system, which flourished, because if you want to trade with India, you had to know how the monsoon system worked. The monsoon system was a key factor in being able to successfully farm, and it was not too hard to understand. It was an understanding of how the seasons changed and affected the agriculture. The summer and spring brought moist winds that allowed for crops to prosper by watering them. While in the dry season, in the northeast, the fall and winter winds blew cold, dry winds that withered crops. Along the, with the monsoon system, irrigation was also a huge factor in being a successful farmer. Mainly in southern India, large dams, reservoirs, and canals were built to help bring water to the crops. The idea was spread throughout different farmers along the road, and people would share their ideas for irrigation to collaborate and make better systems. Things like irrigation and culture were also a big part of the trading on the Silk Road. Indian traditions and clothing went in all directions. Of course, there are goods like things like saffron, sugar, pepper, salt, copper, pearls, and iron traveled in all directions and helped improve agriculture in many places. Maritime trade increased throughout the coastal regions, causing a lot of prosperity throughout the area. Large warehouses were set up in, to send cargo in and out for trade across the Indian Ocean. Because of these factors, India was able to be a huge contributor to the overall growth of the time period. The Silk Road flourished with all of medieval India's contributions. Medieval India exported some of the most valuable trade items, spices, iron, salt, cotton, pearls, and copper. The maritime trade along the Silk Road water routes was huge in India and was a major part of the Indian culture. All these goods helped the economy boom and also aided in the exchange of other cultures, religions, and lifestyles. Buddhism is a great example of this. Buddhism spread from medieval India to China and Japan through extensive trade via the Silk Road. The world today would not be the same without the Silk Road. It was the fundamental beginning of long-distance trade. 
and much of our lives revolve around the success of trade, whether we know it or not, and that is how it has been since the Silk Road developed.